right, we're here at Nucho Auto Group in Addison, Illinois with my boy Chris Moran. Zach, good to see you, brother. Yeah, thanks for having us in. So we're going to take a look around at some of the cool inventory, and you will have many interesting facts to share with us about all the stuff There's a here. lot. You and I have wonderful conversations about cars, so oh, yeah. I guess we'll just share with the world. So yes, we're nerds. We're good. Yep. <laughs> This, all right. okay, this we've had for probably about an hour. Uh, this is a 1977 Turbo Carrera, fully documented car, totally numbers matching, probably a 98 out of 100, came from a fanatical home. I drove it when it came off the truck, turbo blows nicely. Uh, this would be considered the Widowmaker, the original, yeah. uh, 930. So 77 was an interesting year. Uh, you can tell the chrome, you know, they had chrome around the, the windows, and then you also had chrome door handles which is yep. kind of a funny look, but the uh, back on there, so the factory badges were Turbo Carrera back then, and the awesome rear wiper, which should be obligatory on virtually any 911, yep. especially of this vintage. And the classic whale tail spoiler, of course. It is, great color. Um, it, it's really a no compromise car. The turbo look wheels, gotta love that. Yeah, well, they're not turbo look on a turbo. Yeah. <laughs> So everyone made one, make some turbo look on other ones. They're fukes. Wow, look at that, you got the cocoa mats, of course. And look at you got like a Blaupunt, um, like it's like an equalizer. I think that's factory on that thing. Oh yeah. Yeah. Cause well, they're making those deck. like replica, like mimic. Well, look at this. This has like a cassette deck, like from like you know, 1977. Although that could have been an eight track back then too. Yeah. This oh, car probably will clunk. go for close to 200. Yeah. And even at that, it's it's an appreciable car. Um, the the range on these 930s is all over the place. Yeah. And these are the 77s rare. Obviously, we like our Porsches. Yeah, well, I always get distracted by this one, the 997 Targa. It's like the forgotten love child of that generation. I feel like they're coming back now, though, the 993s and 996 Targas We're, that have the weird glass. It's funny, because I've always, I've always called this a non-Targa, and because it really, the rails stay there, and it's like a big panoramic roof. So people get mad at me, because I call it the Pano 4S. Yeah. Because the new Targas, the full top goes down, but. They are hot. I mean, there's always going to be a following for these cars. This particular car is uh, paint to sample Nordic gold. Okay. Uh, 27,000 original miles on it, six speed manual, but it is a Targa 4S. I mean, this is, here, 997s are smoking. I know you enjoy 997s as yeah. well. Um, I've been trying to buy every single one I can come across that's clean, but this is a, I call it a unicorn just based on color and condition, but it's about as close to perfect as you get. Yeah, Targa 4S for me, just in general, across the generations, is like the go-to. Or Four. even Targa 4 GTS, yeah. if you get to the newer ones. 991, a Targa 4 GTS would be my, my go-to Yeah. in a 991. It's just such a perfect all-around 911. I'm sorry. I, is this a C4S? It's a C4S 90, 991. Um, I'm going to officially say it. 992s, I'm sorry, they, there's just... They've gone one step too far. Yeah, 991 was, was good for you, though? 991's I mean, phenomenal. Between these two, obviously, you got a significant difference in size, but, but the 992 has also got a massive tech infusion now with the way Porsche is doing their interiors. So the 991, in, in looking back, looks like kind of that sweet spot before it really took, you know, went all in on screens and stuff like that. Right, and that's why you get in and it's, you know, I mean, like for the Ferrari SF90, the entire dashboard's yeah, uh, capacitive, haptic touch. Capacitive touch, What yeah. classic Ferrari guy wants to start touching a button on the steering wheel to start your brand no. new $700,000 Ferrari? Yeah, that was a mistake on that end. It really was. Uh, last year, I actually did a rally um, last fall, and I had a 992 C4S. So basically, this car in spec, but in the 992, um, it, it was pretty sterile. I yeah. mean, I, you know, we, we did some pretty good speeds, and... You know, this, the sensation of speed and the uh, just usability and experience behind the wheel of this car is superior, in my opinion, to the 992. Yeah. I said it. Which would you pick? Oh, God, dude, that's, that's tough. I'd, I'd go with Nordic Gold. Yeah, the, the color makes that one. For... If this was a manual, I'd probably go that way. Yeah. The power, it's unbelievably fast. Like, it's shocking. Yeah. I was reading the reviews on it. Like, I took it out. I'm like, holy cow, this thing's fast. Zero to 60 three five in this thing. Yeah. Yeah, and it's just a C4S. So, I mean, that's a great daily car. If you're doing a single commuter, they're really, this car does everything. Yep. And the classic guards red. Yep. And Which you don't see that much anymore. And the matching interior with the sport chrono color too. Is that, yep. an, is that a part of an option package? All on the options, yeah. You got the uh, red belts, uh, the whole console, dashboard. Uh, it has front lift, which is kind of rare on a Carrera for us. Oh yeah. Uh, sport exhaust with silver tips which that's obligatory. As soon as you start the car, if it's not on, you hit that. All right, and you love your Vipers. Oh God, how could you not? This is like the press spec here, really. 
8.4 liters. I mean, that's, when is anybody going to build you, anything you like this it, ever yeah, again? With the, with the exterior I hope it's on, right. latch. Try to see if the door's on lock. Well, no, no, on the outside, just so you don't uh, set the alarm off. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good old American horn. This is where the magic happens, as they used to say on cribs. Yep. 8.4 I mean, liters. The exotic presentation of oh, the Viper this. engine bay just never gets old. There's nothing like this. And bike. then when you open up the SRT tens and you see it basically the same thing. Yeah. It's, like it's just giant, and they did such a great job on the fifth gen. Um, every one of these cars is an investment now. I mean, they're they're never going to. What year is this ever one? Again. This is a 14. Okay, so it was I forget when they had the SRT only setup? Was that 13? 13, yeah. 13 only, it's right? So stupid. Then this was Dodge. They realized that. Was yeah, a I mean mistake. the original car was a Dodge. Why did you? Yeah. Why it was, did you do it was that? Something they didn't need to mess with. But yeah, carbon fiber. It's full PPF. No, no. not full. It's got. Uh, actually, I don't know how much it actually has on it. I'm always interested to see I how, how, how much of these cars have PPF versus not. It depends. Like yeah. it's kind of crazy. You get cars that are perfect because they've never had PPF. Yeah. It's nice, they just <laughs> slam. What else? Corvettes. This is cool. Corvettes and Vipers. The real cool thing about this car is it has 11,000 miles and it's a manual. These cars are a blast. Is this a, a Grand Sport? It is, yeah. Yeah, Grand Sport. And the Grand Sport, in my opinion, it's, it's one of the most well-balanced versions of the car. You know, you get a lot yeah. of the Z06 upgrades, but uh, you still have the smaller engine. Yeah. But the, it's actually, it's more bulletproof than the LS7 that comes in the Z06. Those tend yeah, to have some sort of stories, but these are hard to find. Yellow, I'll tell you, yellow is not the most popular for I mean, like Grand, flashy Grand color Sports right now. in general. I feel like you just don't even see too much of. No, we had a twin C7 to this. C7 Grand Sports, you see a little bit more, but they marketed that car right. Yeah, and that C6 car was, was kind of under the radar a little bit. Yeah, I wonder if they're going to do a C8 Grand Sport now. Have you seen the ZR1? Yeah. Oh my God. First, I was like worried that they were still front drive with that kind of uh, power. Yeah. It's rear drive. That's amazing. Yeah, that's just. A I new mean, era of American man. There's morticians all over this country, <laughs> shivering in their boots. Yeah. <laughs> That's not morbid. Then, this car. This one's uh, this one's been here for a bit. What? Yeah. What's the story with this one? The reason this car is still here is that it's lowered in the front. And yeah. I had it sold yesterday, and gentleman came in, went to drive it. He knew this was lowered, but he had to see it for himself. Uh, it really challenges the ability to sell the car. Yeah. If it was at actual ride height, like factory ride height, this, this car, we wouldn't even be talking about it. But I've had it sold a few times, and it's all come down to having the, that front park. Yeah. Uh, this just had $31,000 in maintenance done. What's the mileage? Uh, 28. So yeah. it's a driver. The, the headers rot out on all these. Like, just, it just happens. I don't know if it's just condensation. So you have to replace them at some point. So he replaced them with fab speed headers. So still the stock exhaust, but the sound is just, it's, it's beautiful. It's yeah. symphonic. And obviously you still got your glass cover here. They're, they're nice cars. You know, it's a single clutch, but the clutch in, uh, oh wait, the F1 got uh, upgraded to the Scuderia spec. So really? you've got a brand new F1 so clutch. You've got the most advanced, uh, you know, system in there and literally no stone unturned in this car. I mean, he whipped his checkbook at Continental and they were like, well, we'll spend your money. Yeah, <laughs> as you'd expect. Oh yeah, it drives fantastic. I, talk, I brought it back right after we did the ECU and yeah, it's glorious. It does exactly what it's supposed to do. Nice. With that exhaust just ripping them at, you know, 8,000 plus, it sounds unbelievable. Yeah. This car too, being naturally aspirated, this and the 458 are gonna go down as very appreciable. You're seeing the 488 already come down. Yeah, yeah. Naturally Four, five, eight, stuff. speciale, especially the oh, Aperta, and then 16M Scud. Which is crazy to me, because 16Ms are all paddles, but that's still an awesome car. Yeah. I've spent time with the Scuds, uh, the Coupes, but not a 16M, so that's got to be even more exhilarating. Yeah. It's kind of the it, old world Ferrari still. It's kind of a roadster. You know, when you get in the 458, which replaced this, it's a lot more modern, it's a little more sleek. It's, you, you sit in more of a sporty driving position. Um, you know, they're not terribly similar cars. Yeah. Very nice. And then we got another Viper behind us. So this is where my heart is. RT10s. With so this is a 2000. First year they put ABS in this car. So you weren't sliding through intersections. I did that once in an earlier car. Yeah, and you get actual windows. Yeah, with, <laughs> with a button that puts them up. Yeah, amazing. We actually have the hardtop for it too. That's a, that's a big game changer. But this car came from central Michigan. 
Uh, the gentleman actually has a handwritten letter talking about how hard he didn't drive it. <laughs> so Just because there would be doubts. No, and the condition really shows it. The yeah. car is, it's unreal. Aero straight. The, the clutch takes up nicely. I, I probably put 50, 60 miles on this thing. Um, one of my all-time favorites. Yeah. It's, what was the last year of the RT10s? Uh, last year, so, oh, so that would have been 02. Okay, I was going to say 01, yeah. Yeah, I was hoping they made an RT10 out of the, uh, the fifth gen, but this is still the original body, too. Just this thing, sitting here looks cool, but going down the road, it looks ridiculous. Yeah. Big fan of that part. You got a C5 Ooh, base. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just a, yeah. I mean, they're kind of all base, I guess. And this is one of my current modern favorites right here. I have yet to drive this car. Really? Oh, I don't I, I've know I've always why. been such a big Lotus fan, and like, now that they're going into this new era with like the electric SUV and all this, oh. I don't know, we'll see, but like this is like everything I love about the Evora and the Elise, modernized. Everything I've read. put into a compelling package, and it looks like four times more exotic than the price point would suggest. Right, and if, here, this is the last um, you know, combustion engine they're saying from Lotus. So, yeah, that's so this is, saying. in my mind, the last Lotus. Yeah. Uh, the fact that you can get a brand new car, supercharged six with over 400 horsepower, you got a six speed manual, um, apparently this car is super tossable. I've seen the reviews on it. They're, they're fabulous. Yeah. Um, so, it's ah, the first edition. Maybe today's the day. And oddly enough, you can get an AMG engine in it if you want, which I gotta imagine the take rate's gonna be It's a two minimal. liter with only automatic. You can't get the stick yeah, with the AMG it's, it's, motor. It's the engine from the CLA and yeah. the GLA. Yeah, which I mean, it's still gotta be quick, but. Um, it's a very buzzy engine though. I feel like this, I mean, this more suits the character. Have of, you driven the CLA? Or like a 45 I, variant? I've driven a, a GLA 45, yeah, yeah same thing. Same thing. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. Verdant green over red. Yeah. It's got, uh, it's got about 400 miles on it, so it's not brand, brand new. I'm just glad they're finally making it to customers out here, you know? Had well, this we got from, oh, I shouldn't say it. This we got from a friend dealer, um, and the car sat there for six months, eight months, just waiting for the CPA uh, yeah. release. And it's kind of it's kind of awful, and there's Chinese money behind Lotus now, so you never know what the motive is to keep you know right keep these cars at bay. But yeah, Lotus has a massive influx of Chinese cash, so this will be the last Lotus. Remember what they did with MG? Yeah. Here we go, Lotus. Remember what they tried to do with Celine? You ever see that? Oh God, dude, that poor guy. Yeah. Have you seen Steve Celine like those advertisements on Facebook about where investing? Investors? Yeah. It's crazy if you look at his face. It looks like there's a guy behind the the, the, the camera <laughs> like this. Oh no. Like he's being held at gunpoint on camera. Poor guy. Yeah. He's captive. But he's trying to sell a car that he built in 2016. Well, you know? they brought back God the uh, S7 with the LM, and that apparently crushed it. So. Well, that in terms from, those from the collector side, yeah. Those are almost a million bucks now if they're the turboed ones. Yeah. But that's 750 horse and something that you can't even drive that car on the road. That overhang on the front of it is so long. I mean, the, yeah. you, you have you ever no driven choice. one of those? I've I actually not really. I've been in one, like so. I've moved it, like you know, had to do somewhere. I've drove it for less than a half mile. So yeah. I've, I've sat seen and moved one. It, it wasn't a it. twin turbo model, but yeah, the twin they're, turbos are pretty rare. But they're yeah. they're huge money. Yeah. Huge. Um, I love this. My best friend. Uh, I'll just say it. He pushed out this week and didn't buy it. Trading out of a 40-year 911. Wanted something different. And this is uh, got a BBK intake and throttle body. Corsa RSC exhaust, which is made to eliminate the drone sound that you get in this. Uh, and a Diablo Sport tuner. This thing boogies. And it's, it's naturally aspirated. It's not the, you know, the Hellcat motor. Makes phenomenal sounds. I mean, just you could drive this car sideways all day long if you yeah. wanted to. But I would guess probably close to, these are 420 stock, it's probably close to 500. Feels it and sounds that way. The timing changes, it's got this little lumpy idle. Pretty cool. 2014? Uh, 13. I, no, I take that back. It's a 12, but with 12,000 miles on it. Sturdier than hell because it's actually in the middle of a paint correction. Yeah. Which it so dearly needs, but the car's all original, you know, aside from those few mods. Yeah. They're comfy. You know, it's a good GT Cruiser. I took it to Michigan. And then we got these unicorns in the back. Yeah, we should go check those out. So that's that, that, that blue spree is what always captivates me every time I'm here. Isn't that color fantastic? Yeah. It's called Azure Blue. This car, Top, I'm very wondering. Diff very different from Ferrari's Azure Blue. Well, this car, so right? I. Isn't that what they call theirs? Yeah. That light one. Oh, yeah. Like uh, a sky, it's like a sky blue. Azura Metalli. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, this car is. Total unicorn. Um, this is actually Bill's. 
So I, the yeah, crazy gonna, thing it's is it's going to take a lot for this to leave. Oh, yeah. I Actually, I'm wondering if we do ever run it, I think I'd probably want to send it to a big sale. Yeah. It's unique enough. There's, you're not going to have another competitor out there. And these turbo twin turbo V8s, especially with a stack of uh, service records, they're going to be hot. Because again, Lotus is going away. Yeah. And the Esprit is still such an iconic car. I still think it's a beautiful, beautiful body. Yeah. You've got the, you I know, mean, the, the fact that they built this style until 04 yeah. is crazy. It's almost up there with the last car to have pop-ups along with this thing. I know. Yeah. You know what's funny is young people think it's the funniest thing now. Like kids are yeah. like, oh my gosh, I've never seen a car with pop-ups. And I never think about that. I'm like, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I mean, this made it till 05, 04 or 05. NSX, well, that, yeah, the NA2 came out when, 2000? Uh, no, no. No, so the new body was uh, 02. Because the 01 was still the original body, but you had. Yes, yeah, so they, they had like three years of the. 97, they went to the 3.2 with the six speed. Um, the Target came out in 95, so you had the smaller three liter. So the real money car is like 02 to 05 yeah. um, with a six speed manual. This is a really cool car. Um, you know, before I got in and I did a little bit of research on it and actually Jay Leno had it in with like the, you know, the lead engineer. So do you remember the track key thing? For this car? Yeah. I don't so, know. Like what, like what they have on the Hellcats? Yes, the very much key? so. It's got a red key and they call it the track key. So when you put it in, you turn it, it says, you know, for off-road use only. When it gets warmed up to a point, the car like switches character and it's got a lumpy idle. Um, the throttle response is different, like it's literally in a track mode. So it just drives normal till it gets to that warm part all of a sudden the car, and it's like track mode enabled pops up. Yeah, um, you know, this might sound a little extreme, but I would say this is definitely a performance variant. It's kind of it's like an entry level GT3 for like a Porsche. But seats are awesome, it's got big Recaros in it. Shifter, I mean it's a really close ratio, six speed. It's a lot of fun, and it yeah. sounds fantastic. The Coyote under here is 444 horse. Um, underrated from what I, I would look, because to be honest, I'm not a big Mustang guy. You know, I'd never knock them, but I just, I've never been a massive Mustang guy. Yeah. So. I always thought the Laguna Secas they made of this were pretty cool. Yeah. That's like the, they, they you know, RS-ified <laughs> versions. <Sessions>. Yeah. <laughs> from you, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, that, the Laguna Seca, I, I'm actually curious how many they actually built. Yeah. And that was like the precursor to what they're now doing the, with the GTD. Yeah. How about that thing? Yeah, that's wild. Yeah. That is that is really nuts, you it's know. About, we got the GT500. We just got that GT500 out there. Yeah, I'll say I don't like that car because they're all automatic. The GT350 is where you go with that car. Yeah, manual, the massive red line on that thing, and the flat plane motor. It sounds like a Ferrari over five grand. Yeah, 350 and 350R is still like the golden, the golden oh, Mustang from the last ten years. Almost bought a hundred mile 350R Heritage this week. I nice. had one 125 written down, which I couldn't even believe. And paid uh, it sold for one twenty seven. Don't tell anybody that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, those were nice. Crazy. What yeah. else? Lotus Elise. Well, the NSX. We actually we didn't finish that one, but I, you know, the one thing that's really amazing about this car, and it's like the biggest takeaway. I drove it right away. It is. It's brick solid. It feels yeah. like it was built yesterday, but it feels so much more refined. Like. You remember the peers of its day, the Ferrari 348? Yeah, that was the classic magazine cover. Oh, but NSX what a... NSX versus the 348 TS TV. What a piece of garbage. I mean, what a piece of garbage. The 348? Oh, it's, it's like undercooked food. <laughs> so yeah, well. this comes out. This car forced them to make the Ferrari F355. Right. It is so smooth, so comfortable. I mean, here, a lot of firsts. Aluminum chassis, VTEC, um, drive-by wire. There's just a Engineered by Ayrton Senna. Yes, how many other cars can you say were right. developed with Ayrton Senna in mind? Yeah. They had developed. the Zanardi edition, remember? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 99. This is this cool. This is cool, yeah. I, I always, the E9s are like, you know, it's the classic shark nose design evolution of these it, Beamers before the 6 Series came along. Looks so much better in person, too. The, the B pillar placement. Just gotta love pillarless coupes. It never gets old. Well, none of that. Have you ever driven in the pillarless coupes? The wind buffeting is totally different. Yeah. It's well, kind of nice. And you got these, too. Yeah, I uh, I took this to one of the Lyle shows uh, on a, oh, yeah? it was a Saturday night show. It got a lot of love. I had a phone call from a guy a couple weeks ago. He's like, hey, are you the guy that had that uh, 3 OCS? I'm like, yeah, that's me. Yeah. Um, this actually, so we got this from a longtime uh, client of Bill's. He's an artist in Michigan. 
he basically set this car up to be a driver. So this is not like a numbers matching car. Traditionally, it's a regular, just fuel injected three liter. Um, this is the Euro spec. They took the four speed you get in the auto or in the Euro US cars, put the five speed in it, but Bluetooth upgraded audio, <laughs> ice cold air conditioning, yep. and upgraded seats, which are incredibly comfortable. Upgraded seats, what did he do? Just got rid of the original? They're out of, they're out of another car. I'm not 100% sure. I can't really tell. It looks like they might be like sporty three series seats, but they also look okay. like they might be out of a Mustang Cobra. <laughs> so I can't tell. Just a mishmash for ultimate drivability. Comfier than hell. Yeah. But this is this kind of car makes a statement. I actually think these wheels are off like the, uh, the E39 528. Oh, okay. Yeah. But, I mean, yeah, they're definitely not the originals. No, they're 15s. But yeah, Maybe 16s. 16s. But yeah, I think these came like literally right off like the, the 98 528. Yeah. Looks good though. Yeah. Whatever happened to that E34? You guys sold that? No, I've got it at, I've got it at the body shop. They're doing a full uh, wet sand and buff for me. Oh, okay. Cool. It's, That's a car. And I'm putting about four grand of maintenance into it. So doing hoses, all the fluids. There's a couple of things like um, a couple of the joints are cracked, but that car's got to be top to top. But I probably put about 100 miles on that thing. What a treat. You know, yeah, I've never driven like one of those. You get in the, the, the full BMW smell. Oh, dude, wait till you see it. It's, it is like the most like cliche everything for BMW. Yeah. And it has everything in it. Like came, the guy that we bought it from, great, great guy, lives in Wheaton. He built this corporate complex where there's a garage under, it's like a bat cave. And he keeps his cars down there. Um, and he's got like a whole like work area, wash bay and all this stuff, but nobody even knows it's there. So we went in, we went in his bat cave and we bought it there. Um, but he's had it since 1992. Yeah. Dynan chip, Dynan exhaust, and uh, Dynan intake. So worthy upgrades. Oh, and Dynan suspension. So, yeah. you know, Dynan was the only thing that was ever covered by BMW manufacturer's warranty. So I right. think that builds a little value. Then you got the purest thing in the world up here. Have you ever been in one of these? I have not. I love the Elise and the Exiges, but I've never set foot in one. So I don't know how cramped it may be. It's not actually. Once you're in, they're fine. Getting in yeah. and out is kind of a, there's a method to it. They are so fun to drive. It's the closest thing to a go-kart. You got a Toyota motor. Yeah. So you can't really break it. They love to run. Pretty skinny tires too. It's just, it's a great formula. It really is. And here, my first track day ever was in an Elise. And talk about just getting confidence and getting out there. Cause it was a little terrifying getting on the track for the first time. Yeah. But you know, this thing was holding its own. I mean, it really can handle well. You really can't hurt yourself. I just, uh, I really enjoy driving these. These are upgraded wheels, aren't they? Uh, no, these are actually standard wheels, believe it or not. They were. They, they are. They, you know, yeah, they look the, like they were from uh, Louis Vora or something. I don't know. Most, they, of they them, look... most of them have a sport pack, which this does not. Um, it does have the touring package, which is kind of like just, I don't know, I guess the, the inserts in the interior. One, none of them don't have it. Yeah. Uh, it does have a upgraded exhaust. But this was sold new by Bill Nuccio. Yep. 9,000 miles. Back. A guy called yesterday and he goes, uh, man, you guys want a lot for that car. I go, mm hmm. He's like, what, how do you justify that? I go, well, when you have one of the nicest in the country, I mean, look, it's cobwebbed under it. <laughs> when you have one yeah, of the nicest out the there. You got fully flat underbody. It's cool to see that. Yeah, good for arrow. Yeah. And then the little, you know, cutouts, like the neck of ducks yeah, that are taking yeah. it in. It's cool. But yeah, we're yeah. Running, running a little low. Got a couple cars inbound. I bought a 12 Raptor with 16,000 miles on it. 6.2. Yeah. Proper V8 in a real truck. But yeah, there's, uh, there's all these cool stuff coming. Nice. I want to load up, though. Yeah. We've sold so much stuff in the last two weeks that I'm getting to the point, I'm like, guys, one in, one out, and then we still have to continue to replenish. So that's the biggest challenge in the business right now. Yep. And sure. when you look at the quality of the stuff we have, it's tough to just go out and find stuff at this caliber, um, you know, kind of set what separates the men from the boys. And I've done this so long, it's like, you know, I, I really started CarMax 20 years ago, which was what I call a car college. But learning to buy cars and, you know, manage this style of business at this boutique level is it's just wonderful. And the crazy thing is, if you look at our reviews online, we do this business this casually. Yeah. And we are extremely professional. We're knowledgeable. Um, we know we take great cares of our cars. We want all these cars back when they're done. But um, it kind of sets us apart, I guess. You know. Yeah. And well, it's, a, it's a genuine group of car people too. Oh, that's it's not always how it goes with these no, types of dealerships. No, we're not smashing grab robbers. That's for sure. Yeah. But I dig them. Nice. I'm really. Uh, I'm happy you guys came out. This is badass. Yeah. Well, thanks for showing us around the showroom for a bit. Sorry, to more cars. Oh. Don't be sorry. I'm sure next time we'll come by, there'll be a nice surprise. Like the turbo, I wasn't expecting that. No, I, I was actually, I was thrilled to see that came in. I wasn't expecting that till Monday. And yeah. then all of a sudden it showed up this morning. I'm like, oh, 
So I got to take a bunch of pics. I want to get that thing online ASAP. Yeah. I'll probably do a video for you out of here. Nice. Yeah. All right. Well, that was a nice little tour of the Nutri Auto Group showroom here in Addison with Chris. So and good to uh, see you as always. Of course, of course. And we'll we'll see you at the Lyle show next weekend probably, right? Yeah. On Sunday? Yeah. yeah what's, hey. What are you going to bring? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Well, leave it to be a surprise. <laughs> Might be silver. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. See. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Absolutely. Thank you.